Talking Tile, the Ontario Farm Drainage Series, is brought to you by the Land Improvement Contractors of Ontario. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to Talking Tile. In this episode, we're going to talk about tile drainage and the environment. It's a big conversation. Let's get to it with my guest, Mel Limas. She's the Executive Director of the Land Improvement Contractors of Ontario. So Mel, whenever we talk about drainage, there's always pros and cons, and there's always questions about the environmental impact. Um, how should we think about agricultural drainage from an environmental perspective? Well, everything I say is going to sound like a gross oversimplification. It is quite complicated and nuanced, but I think it's important to remember that drainage is just one part of water management, and as long as we've had agriculture, we've had to consider water management. So drainage is not new, and especially here in Ontario in the Great Lakes region, we get 30 to 40 inches a year, we have excess precipitation, and that's why we're talking drainage. We wouldn't have agriculture here without drainage. Um, the only thing maybe that's changed is that we are very good at it these days. <laughs> so that comes with its pros and cons. So on the pro side, anytime you can increase yield and increase efficiency, like if we can grow more on less land, I think that's a win for the environment. Uh, when nature can stay nature is a good thing. On the other hand, um, it has changed how water moves on our landscape and also what's in the water. So uh, it's carrying some of our agricultural nutrients and it's, it's taking them to, in this case, we're going to Lake Huron, but um, or also like to the Gulf of Mexico, for example, it's always taking it to a water body and that's where there's potential for an algae bloom. Um, in freshwater systems, phosphorus is the culprit uh, and, and in the Gulf of Mexico, in a saltwater system, then it's nitrogen that's the issue. And so that's why we're really talking about those two nutrients here. Now, Mel, let's talk more about nitrogen and phosphorus here. You know, how are these nutrients lost and, and what's the impact of drainage? Uh -huh. They're two very different nutrients. Uh, nitrogen is often lost through like off-gassing. Uh, through nitrous oxide, whereas phosphorus is bound to the soil, so it's lost when there's soil erosion. Um, but both of them have a dissolved form, which is important because that's how the plant would uptake it, but that puts them at risk for leaving through the tile drainage systems. But in terms of numbers, I think the research, best done by Dr. Marin McRae at, at Waterloo, um, it's just a few pounds an acre that's being lost, maybe two to three percent of what's being applied. Um, and about 50% is coming through the tile itself. So Mel, how does drainage impact that? Again, there's pros and cons. So drainage is, is dropping the water table down two to three feet. So that means that there's air in the topsoil, which means an automatic reduction of nitrous oxide emissions by 50%. That's Dr. Mike Castellano's research in Ohio, at least. Um, so that's like 30 to 90 pounds less nitrogen that you even need to apply. So that's a huge environmental win, especially considering that nitrous oxide is a greenhouse gas. Uh, that's why the federal government has come down with that goal to reduce emissions. Um, on the, so that's a win for the, for the nitrogen. But on the phosphorus side, it's also, uh, it allows for the, the water to infiltrate into the soil better because there's the drainage. And so it's, it's already reducing that soil roof. But then again, on the other hand, um, the drainage system itself becomes a transport pathway for the phosphorus and the nitrogen for the dissolved parts of it. But that also gives us an opportunity to control and treat it within the system itself. So as you say, um, there are certainly, you know, trade-offs when it comes to drainage. You know, how do, how do we do a better job of preventing those nutrients from leaving the field and, and keeping them in the field, you know, where they can drive crop production? Exactly. That's where they should stay. Um, the rule of thumb is the closer to the field you are, the cheaper the solutions. And uh, we often say avoid, control, treat. So if you avoid the problem in the first place, this is, these are excess nutrients that are leaving through the system. It's important to consider that. So uh, the 4R nutrient stewardship, that's always where it starts. Think about your uh, rates, but also the timing, um, especially of manure when the nutrients are released. If there's a living crop or a cover crop in this case uh, that can take up those nutrients, that's the best. You're avoiding the problem in the first place. And here we've strip tilled and we're really strategically placing the nutrients where the crop is going to need them. So that's a void. But um, when it gets into the system itself, that's where you could either control or treat the water. Yeah. So let's talk about that. You know, what are some of the options to look at here? Uh, control gates can certainly play a role, right? Oh, for sure. So control gates, imagine that you could put a dam in your tile system. That's essentially what it is. Stop logs that you would raise the water table until it overtops. So you could raise it a foot or two. And so every kind of foot or two of fall, you would, you would put in a control gate. Note that it has to be on a, a flat, pretty flat grade. 
else you would just blow the whole system. But what we learned at Huron View, um, at that demo farm just south of Clinton, that's a very steep slope, but we could hold the water back by basically stepping up the tiles and running them on contour. So it's totally possible to control drainage. And some of the research, at least from the USDA, is saying, so if we're holding maybe 20 to 40% of the water back within the controlled system, that's also 20 to 40% of the nutrients that are held back. And now they're, they're for crop use. Uh, and and that's that stuff that never even left the system in the first place. Yeah. What about I mean, there's other things to think about too. What about wetlands? Wet, what wetlands could play. Yes, wetlands. I like to think of a wetland as, as as a type of controlled drainage, especially like a tile outlet wetland. It technically didn't leave the field, right? And especially when you can reuse that water, you can recycle it, you can irrigate it back, or uh, even run it back through the drainage tiles for sub irrigation. But the, the thing about wetlands is it's also treating the water. So the vegetation in the wetland, the longer the water stays in the wetland, the more it's taken up, um, the nitrogen and the phosphorus. So um, wetlands are a way of treating the water. If you can outlet the water on the bench of a two-stage ditch where there's vegetation, that's a way of treating the water because, again, those nutrients are taken up by the plants themselves. So a saturated buffer would be another example of, of how you can use plants themselves to treat that water. But now imagine we could do it like totally underground and this is they're often called bioreactors or biofilters but imagine a big container under the ground that's filled with a media and so the the tile drainage water goes through the media and and is filtered in in this case uh, nitrogen is filtered by wood chips um, and then phosphorus can be treated with like an iron like our steel slag i've heard of there's research on, on eggshells um, or iron chloride so, so those are ways of treating it like totally contained within the system itself. Now, you know, most of those options come with a cost. You know, what do you tell farmers about the cost impact and, and how they get best manage that? Yeah. Some of the research I've read is saying it's about a dollar per pound of phosphorus in this case um, that's treated. Um, but it's still cheaper to buy a new pound of phosphorus. So like it's not at this moment in time, it's not the economics that'll be driving this. Um, there's, we've got to have some more intentionality about really being good neighbors to, to downstream of us. Final question, Mel, and that is about the future. As we discussed, uh, there is a cost in creating environmentally responsible drainage, but there's also a lot of stakeholders that play a role here. You know, what's the path forward? Hey, it's a good question because we all eat, so we all have a shared responsibility for water quality. Um, and honestly, there's so much smart people working on this, the research being done in, in Ontario alone, um, and that there's brilliant contractors that are working on this too, uh, thinking of innovative uh, new drainage designs. But ultimately, we need to get these installed. Like, if farmers are willing to be on the leading edge of this, uh, I do hope that there's more government support in the future, that we all kind of come to the table and be intentional uh, to drive water quality through tile drainage systems.